and thus people uh, express their opinion through not going uh, uh, by not going to elect governments or vote for far right parties, so as they do not feel safe. <coughs> and uh, and we see the racism and xenophobia. And what about the benefits that uh, we would get after implementing such a policy? Culturally uh, uh, similar people integrate easier into that culture. Less th so thus less of misunderstandings would occur because, for example, they would know the, the language. Thus the governments will be sure that these people will be more likely to integrate and will be successful members uh, of the society. And people uh, will feel government is um, taking into consideration what they want uh, and uh, they will feel safe. Thus, less of the resentment will be uh, uh, faced uh, between the state and the citizens. What, what is more, we would stop the growth of xenophobia that, uh, xenophobia that exists now. We'll have uh, less of rapidly, uh, rapidly increasing number of, uh, as we would have uh, less of rapidly increasing number of different cultures. And we won't be afraid uh, of more of flows of those uh, culturally different people. Uh, we would be taking away uh, the far right party, uh, far right party's tool uh, to, you know, implement uh, uh, such uh, uh, policies which are now now religious. So, for all these reasons, we beg you to propose this motion. Thank you. Thank you. So please, would you sit down because we're going to start the cross-examination as fast as possible. Would you please, everyone who's coming into the room, quickly enter and sit down. Similar cultures include things like history, region, language, etc. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you a question specifically about language. So you're saying that when they apply for a visa, that they have to fill in a box that they know certain languages, correct? Yes. How are you going to verify this? Uh, yeah. Are you going to give a language test to them? It's not necessary. It's not necessary for what? Well, it's not. It's not that important. Okay, but you do agree that if you implement it's a not, policy... It's not, not the only thing. Uh, it's not the only thing, but it is a part of this debate, right? Well, it's not the only thing that these people would have to, you know, fill in with okay. the application. Alright, thank you. Now, let's move on. Now, it's been repeated time and time again in your speech that citizens will feel unsafe, right? Yes. Why do citizens feel unsafe? Well, because they are afraid of becoming minorities and losing their identity. So, but you do agree that whether we prioritize which cultures, that governments still have control over how many migrants, or at least legal migrants, they allow, right? Yeah. So, do, regardless of whether we affirm this resolution or not, governments will still have control over how many legal migrants they can let in. Yeah. Okay, um, let's move on. Do you agree with me that far right-wing parties are a bit extreme to that they promote discrimination? Yes. So you don't want any far-right parties taking over governments? Yes. 
Yes, and we believe that we'll be taking away there too. You know that, that they, they are basically uh, saying, oh, uh, they are scaring the people by saying there will be a lot more of those the, of those people that you are afraid of. Okay. You'll be losing your identity. Thus, we should implement those. All laws. right. So you're telling us that you don't want far right wing parties to have tools to discriminate. Would you agree with me that this resolution, this policy, is actually something a far right wing party would implement? No. So you're saying you don't think that far right wing parties want to prioritize cultures that are similar to theirs and, uh, instead of other cultures? Uh, it's, it's not the same thing. They, okay. they are, they're implementing just, you know, unjust laws within the country. Mm -hmm. They are not dealing, you know, uh, that much with the migration. All right, one more thing. You said that as long as we don't disrupt the home country that this resolution is okay. So if we show you that your policy is actually going to disrupt the home country or say the developing nations that are moving, would we uh, win this debate then? Because we're showing the harms of the home country itself? Because I never saw in your policy how this is going to benefit the home country. Well, not necessarily you're going to win this debate. Okay. Um, and then the last question I would like to ask is that would you agree with me that poverty lines and uh, the rich and the wealthy, uh, the rich and the poor, is something that is a cultural difference as well? That usually developed nations have different cultures to developing nations? Could you rephrase the question? Um, do you think that developing nations have different cultures of developed nations? Well, yeah. Okay, and then do you think cultures are constantly changing or are they stagnant? Uh, they're, they're changing. Okay, thank you. Could I please ask the audience to be quiet while preparation time is running? Thank you.
we are giving the floor to the first negative speaker. Welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, firstly, I'd like to go over the opponent's case and then we're going to introduce the negative case today. Uh, so first off, for the definition, she mentioned that uh, cultural similarities basically includes religion, language, similar history, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in the cross-examination, we saw clearly that they can't even verify their own knowledge about a similar language. What are we going to do to ensure that these people have the same cultural similarity? We asked, are we going to give a language test? But she said, no, that's not the only thing. Okay, if we can't even ensure that they know their own language, how are we going to ensure other things about cultural similarities? Although we understand that this is not exactly a policy case, uh, this should still be taken into consideration. So moving on to the principles about this debate. Uh, she mentions time and time again throughout their entire speech about how these people are actually going to be afraid, like the citizens are going to be afraid of these migrants, and then this will increase right-wing parties. And throughout my speech, I'll prove to you how it's going to actually be opposite if we implement this policy. It's actually going to increase the uh, dangers for citizens. So moving on to their first contention, which is about how the rule of state uh, is basically to protect citizens before any other person. But first of all, let's look at the resolution once again. It has nothing to do whether we should not protect citizens. It's basically saying, do we have this obligation to try to prioritize people with similar cultures or not? So we're specifically just talking about migrants. Even if we are trying to ensure the safety of citizens, implementing this policy will actually worsen the safety of these citizens because there will be increased social tension. And I'll prove, to you when, and I'll prove that to you when I get to my case. Uh, another thing they said about how like the social contract issue, once again, migrants still follow the social contract even if they're, uh, when they're legal, uh, especially if they have visa applications. They have to follow the rules of the law of the country they're in. They have to pay taxes. They have to do all of the things that citizens have to do. So this is irrelevant. The second point was about how we, the, there are positive outcomes or there are certain outcomes like the loss of identity of a country. But throughout, this, throughout the 21st century, we see a growth of globalization and cosmopolitanism with cultures in Iraq. If we basically cement different types of cultures into different types of regions, we become more xenophobic because we are not that assimilated to different cultures. Once that happens, we have things like the growth of far right wing parties. Basically, their policy is just increasing this amount of social tension. When we don't know different cultures, we're basically saying, we don't want to interact with you, we just want to increase this uh, distinction we have between each other. So this point, once again, goes to our side. We don't have this loss of identity. In fact, the identities are becoming intermixed. Third point was about how this will actually increase benefits. And this is one of the most important points that they addressed was that, once again, citizens feel unsafe. Okay because they're afraid. But let me tell you this, when people feel fear, once again, throughout history we see, out of fear, people react radically, far right wing parties. When we give them a weapon, for example, allowing people to discriminate against what type of people they can allow in, this is only going to increase the amount of power that far right wing parties will have. And this will only increase the amount of social tensions within the country and between countries. So let me go over uh, our, our case. Was the first point is that there will be an increase within the countries. When, we have, when the states practice discrimination between migrants, why not? Uh, this will actually lead to everyone being discriminatory against other people. We see this in cases like the United States of America when you have this law like the Arizona law where actually police can ask you if you have documentation if you look illegal, i.e. Most, most migrants from in America in the southern borders are from Mexico. So if you look Mexican, for example, people, will, or people can ask you for your documentation. Even if you're legal, you're going to be discriminated against. This, once again, causes more social tension because, once again, people have this like uh, xenophobic reaction towards other people, even if they're there legally, even if they're there with the proper documentation. And this type of discrimination, once again, only increases the amount of parties. Who's to say that Arizona will pass this law that says no migrants are allowed to go in? This only increases the amount of xenophobic reactions we have towards people, and this policy will basically give them another weapon of choice to try to basically implement this idea. And the reason why most police in uh, today's world can't do this type of thing where you ask people for documents is because that's going to increase citizens' like uh, social tension within the migrants. A citizen will basically say, oh, he looks, for example, Polish, he's probably illegal. He looks Mexican, and he's probably illegal. That type of social discrimination and that type of negative stereotypes only perpetuate more types of social tension that basically reward or basically give our right-wing parties the exact power that we don't want them to, to get, especially in a world where more co cosmopolitanism and globalization is occurring. Our second point was that, is that uh, there's going to be tensions between countries. For example, let's say terrorist organizations like Al Qaeda basically say, you know, the West mistreats Muslims. They can't build mosques. They can't allow. They can't be allowed to wear their burqas in France. And then the West says, no, we actually treat everyone equally. But if we do this policy where we actually try to uh, prioritize people with a similar culture, Al Qaeda and the, those types of groups that promote this type of idea, they're right. 
So who's to say they're gonna not they're not gonna use this type of excuse to try to promote their own ideas? Because the fact is, if these groups are saying, oh, we actually don't treat everyone equally as we say we do. We're actually prioritizing which type of people we want in our country because we don't want to assimilate with your culture. Is only going to is only going to give ex, uh, these types of terror organizations or far right wing parties a bigger excuse and a bigger tool, a weapon to try to promote this anti migration and, and, and xenophobic reactions. So once again, to, uh, once again, to go over the entire debate today is the fact that their entire policy is about how we should prioritize migrants with similar cultures, basically, basically reject different types of cultural diversity, which is actually already happening right now with the growth of globalization. If we cement different types of cultures within different types of regions, this only increases the amount of xenophobia. The exact same thing that they don't want, as we saw that they, in the third point, the benefit is to reduce xenophobia. We assume that they also don't want xenophobic reactions, but their policy is not the way to go. Especially with the increased social tension between countries, and increased tension between uh, within the countries, increased tension between citizens and migrants. And for these reasons, we find that the affirmative case is flawed. So please vote for the negative. Okay. Thank you, speaker, for your speech and uh, its preparation time for the course examination for affirmative team. Why the uh, extremist parties are going to 
had something like that, as you mentioned. Uh, of, so of some kind of uh, resolution like that. Why would why extreme did, parties? Yes. Well, why do you think they would prefer people of the same culture to come to their country? Why would they prefer? I don't know why. I'm saying that they shouldn't be able to discriminate against people who should or shouldn't come to their country. immigration flows to control which immigrants come in in the nation. 
And the, what, what you've said is uh, that we shouldn't really talk about ensuring the safety of the citizens because it doesn't matter because we're talking about immigrants. So ladies and gentlemen, if we see a clear harm in this debate that uh, Immigrants with different cultural backgrounds are coming to a nation, and they and make uh, the citizens feel insecure. They they uh, promote these social tensions, uh, further xenophobia. So, if we show you a clear harm, ladies and gentlemen, we believe that actually this is part of the debate, and this is a major part of the debate because, ladies and gentlemen, what we believe is that the role of the state is to be accountable for its citizens, is to be accountable for the people who elected the state, and you don't. Uh, who don't want further flows of these immigrants uh, that make them feel unsafe. Um, and we believe that they uh, didn't really respond to this, that the uh, country has a right to control which immigrants are, are coming into the nation. And this leads us to a second point about how these uh, people, uh, citizens, feel unsafe in the country is about in the individual perspective. So first of all, what we said is that such a such immigrants, uh, increasing flows of immigrants with a different cultural background, uh, give a fears to, to the citizens. And they didn't really respond how they uh, do not make the, feel the citizens uh, uh, on, uh, uneasy in the state, and we believe that they actually do. If you live in a block with uh, people with a lot of cultural differences, then first of all, uh, you will feel insecure, and we have an example about the burqas. They were banned because people thought that actually they feel insecure. They cannot see the eyes of a person. They don't know who he is. They don't, they don't know it. And, uh, there are, and we believe this gives an incentive to the far-right parties to actually implement policies that are harmful for the immigrants that are already in the nation. And we see, uh, and we see a lot of other examples. For example, a priest in Florida who's trying to burn, uh, to trying to instate a burning of the Quran. And we see that this is exactly because they feel insecure and they don't want more immigrants because they don't like these immigrants for different cultural backgrounds. And we believe that the state has to protect the individual uh, that is the citizen of the country because it's. It, it, it is um, a lot more important to protect them uh, than those immigrants who are coming. And, and this leads us to, uh, to our third point about social benefits. So first of all, first of all what we said is that we get, uh, those migrants who are coming from uh, similar cultural backgrounds have a, a lot of uh, more, more means to integrate in the society. First of all, if they know the language, if they're similar, they have a lot more job opportunities and we believe this is a clear benefit because they will bring a lot more benefits to the state. It's easier for them to integrate uh, in the state and they themselves feel a lot more safe. And second of all, it removes the incentive uh, from the citizens to be angry at the government to vote for far-right parties because they feel they are uh, they feel a lot more safer with uh, people with a uh, similar cultural background in, in in their own nation. So, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, and on the point uh, of there, that it will increase discrimination. So ladies and gentlemen, we don't believe that a policy that prevents uh, uh, flows of different uh, immigrants who are already giving xenophobia will increase more tension. So ladies and gentlemen, we beg you to propose the motion. Legal or illegal migrants? 
Um, we would rather have legal migrants. Okay, so if the negative proves that citizens will be nor uh, will be basically affected by this policy, should we negate it? Yeah, but we don't really see how this policy will increase discrimination if there are less people who, who are different who give you fear coming into the state because that's exactly the part of the, uh, discrimination because you feel that you, you are threatened by the fact that there are more people coming that you feel unsafe with. Okay, uh, and what is national sovereignty? National sovereignty is the right for a country to do uh, to do what it, what it uh, wants to if it doesn't harm certain individuals' hu basic human rights and uh, other countries' sovereignty. Okay, and do you think governments should exercise their sovereign, uh, sovereignty according to the safety of their citizens? Yes. Okay. Uh, is illegal immigration control controllable by a state? Yes, it is. In what ways? Um, border protection uh, laws that actually decrease uh, uh, how much you want to illegal immigrant, for example, deportation. Right, but if we can't find them, like they don't have documents, can we control those undocumented people? Well, we can't find them even if they don't have documents. That's why we're sending people back right now, because we find them. Uh, but can we find like the majority of them? Um, well, actually, or do we not know because we don't know? Well, people. that's why the border control is in place. If border control works, then we have deportation that actually takes away the, the rest of the legal immigrants. Okay, if we discriminate against certain types of migrants who seek to enter, what do you think they will do to enter a country that they really want to enter? Um, uh, if we discriminate against certain types of migrants who want to enter a country, what do you think they will do to enter a country if they're not allowed in legally? Well, they're probably not going to enter, or they may try to enter. Okay, and do migrants in the status quo exist in certain nations? Yes, they do. Okay, thank you very much. Speaker. Before I begin, I'd like to thank our opponents for a great speech. However, I'd like to point out a few things that they failed to mention. First and foremost, in the crossfire, our opponents agreed that one, when you discriminate, it creates illegitimacy with your government. But their policy itself states that we should 
promote discrimination against different cultures. So basically, our opponents are proposing something that delegitimizes every single government. So we have to recognize that this is bad for the governments. Now, before I go on, I'd like to first go talk about our opponents' case and what they said against our rebels, and then I'll go on to my case, which, in retrospect, they completely dropped. Now, first and foremost, they stated that they want to decrease immigrants in general, and a state has the right to control who they want to, who they want to allow into a country. And yes, we agree, a state does have the right to control legal immigrants. However, you cannot control illegal immigrants, and what happens is, when you decrease when you decrease um, the legal immigrants of different cultures, those individuals will still want to enter a nation. They'll still want to enter the country because in most cases, as our opponents agreed in the first crossfire, they're going to want to enter a nation because they tend to be poor. Um, these people from different cultures tend to be poor. And when they tend to be poor, they want to go into a nation where they have better benefits, where they have better rights. And when they do that, they're going to, want, um, they're going to still want to enter a diff the, the host nation. And so what happens then? They will want to enter illegally. And, and you can see that between legal migrants and illegal migrants, citizens tend to dislike illegal migrants because they're basically saying illegal migrants are basically the world of their country. So if anything, it will increase discrimination. It will increase the likelihood for far right movements because now they have more reason to dislike migrants because there's a bigger population of legal migrants within that nation. Secondly, our opponents basically said that um, when there are more different cultural backgrounds, this leads to more social tension. And once again, first and foremost, um, first and foremost, once again, we're uh, first and foremost in status quo, our opponents agreed in Crossfire that migrants of different cultures currently exist in status quo. So what happens then? We're actually leading to more discrimination for the migrants in status quo. Because we can see that these, in in these individuals are not being taken account for. They're basically saying, oh, we'll de decrease all these different cultures, but we realize that these cultures currently exist. And so if we, um, if we do so, then they're basically saying, let's leave them be, or let's let them be discriminated against, let's, let's just let them be and allow people from different cultures to enter. And second, and second of all, once more, this leads to more illegal immigration, and more illegal immigration leads to more um, discrimination because these people, the citizens, do not like illegal immigration, more so than legal migrants. And so we can see that this actually fuels far right parties because now they have a greater reason to exist. Now they have a greater reason to discriminate against these people. Um, now going on to our case. So basically, our opponents largely dropped our entire case, so I'm just going to stand on, on our own points. So the first point is about how when states practice discrimination, then citizens are more likely to feel legitimized and discriminating as well, in jobs, in education, and, and all these different stereotypes. Because what happens is these, uh, these, um, these, the citizens think that, okay, it's okay, because our government is okay with discriminating against people of different countries, we will discriminate against people of different countries. And we can see that can be the case in jobs, in schools. So now you're giving less opportunities for these individuals who want to, um, who want to, to better their situation within these places. Second of all, our opponents largely fail to counter our point about tensions between countries. Right? What we see in today's society that there are radical anti-democratic parties, uh, anti-democratic societies who do not like Western nations because they believe Western nations discriminate. And in status quo, Western nations are saying, no, we don't discriminate. We believe that people of different cultures, Muslims, etc., um, are should be equal in society. But when we pass this policy, what happens is. When they pass this policy, what happens is now they're giving a reason for these places, just Al Qaeda, um, etc., to, to believe that it's okay, that to believe that they have a reason to have these um, to to attack to to be angry at the Western nations for discriminating. And we can see that just yesterday in Norway, 80 people were killed in an act against Western nations. And so we can see that if we have if we pass their policy, we're legitimizing these. We're giving reason and legitimizing these anti-democratic radical parties, um, anti-democratic nations, to feel that Western nations are actually oppressing them. Um, so we can see that because we believe that all individuals, not just legal, not just illegal, but the governments themselves are being harmed through our opponent's, poli our opponent's policy, we beg you to negate. Thank you.
population uh, control work? Well, I'm saying that it won't work, and therefore it's worse to have these individuals. Why won't it work? Because it's because a nation can't control illegal immigrants, that's why they're illegal. So they you're saying that illegal immigrants. Thank you. So you're saying that uh, countries cannot control illegal immigration at all, even though policies are implemented, the border control, right. and deportation. Right. But if those policies work, there would be no illegal immigrants in status quo. Okay. Do you agree that country has the right to control what illegal Im what legal immigrants are uh, coming to the country? Yes. Yeah. So you're basically agreeing to our policy, no, and then we can prioritize. But what I'm saying is, if we do implement your policies, all these different harms come. We're not saying that a nation has no sovereignty to, to control these migrants, but what happens is now you're harming not only the legal migrants, the illegal migrants, but the citizens and the government themselves. Okay, so what there will be more uh, of discrimination within uh, the country? Because what, those people? Uh -huh. because what your policy is basically stating is that governments are okay with discriminating against people of different cultures. And when you say that, um, citizens within that nation feel legitimized to also discriminate, not in just in jobs, not just in stereotypes, but in education for the children as well. Uh, okay, and you believe that uh, people cannot integrate right now, right? Well, you stated yourself that certain individuals can integrate. Ladies and gentlemen, we would really appreciate if you gave the chance of the third affirmative to prepare her speech in silence. Thank you.
we invite the third affirmative speaker to give the last speech. Welcome to the floor. Education. Ladies and gentlemen, in the very first 
uh, speech we said that this is a working visa and it does not tackle education at all. Okay, and now, oh, and, and another example came from Al -Qaeda, uh, of, of, about Al Qaeda that this is that they are going to hate us more. Ladies and gentlemen, Al Qaeda doesn't like Western countries. It doesn't like anybody. It does. It is not going to hate us even more. And actually, they do not have the incentive um, to. Uh, they do not want their own people to go to other countries. That's why they do not have a reason to hate us for implementing such a policy. We see this example absolutely in irrelevant. So what actually the opposition suggested us is to, uh, to, to leave those flows of immigrants and actually to leave the way it is. And we believe this is not the way to solve the problem of tensions because it is a big problem in our country, in our country. And actually, if we want to diminish the number of those tensions, we have to implement this policy. Thank you for your speech, and it's time for a concluding speech of the third negative speaker. Sorry. Is everyone ready? There's a couple things that we must establish in this debate before I go on straight to the classroom. Um, and I'm going to go straight to the establishments. First, we've established that we don't want right-wing parties. Second, we've established that an illegitimate government is bad. Thirdly, we established that this policy exercises national sovereignty. We've never established, however, that by disagreeing with this policy, it's going to harm national sovereignty. Because we're not talking about whether a government can do this or not, we're talking about whether a government should do this or not. And that's the exact criteria that I provide you in this debate that if we implement this policy, would it actually uphold sovereignty or would it delegitimize this sovereignty? And the negative has clearly proven you throughout this debate that it will delegitimize sovereignty. Having said that, I'm going to move on to the three clash points of this, uh, this debate. The first thing I'm going to talk about is, as the affirmative has provided, government legitimacy and government sovereignty. Now, first of all, we've already agreed that we don't want citizens to feel unsafe or be harmed in any way. The negative has clearly shown you, however, that this policy does exactly that, that it harms citizens and it makes them feel unsafe. And here are the reasons that we have provided. First of all, we've shown you that illegal immigration will spike. Now, the third speaker has brought up a new point about how they will come from different regions instead of increasing. Even if you agree with that point, it still does not solve the social tension problem. Because basically what the third affirmative speaker has just said is that instead of discriminating against one entity, we're going to start discriminating against other entities from other different regions of other illegal migration statuses. So in other words, if we implement this policy and if you do believe what the third affirmative speaker has just said, then it's not going to solve the discrimination issue. However, on the other hand, the negative has clearly provided you that illegal immigration will increase because logically speaking, if we deny, especially the poor people, their access to this country, the only thing that's going to create is them not backing out and saying, I'm going to stay in my poor country, but they're going to go illegally. And the only thing that far right wing parties want is more illegal immigrants so that they can start discriminating and start, uh, start going against these people. Second, we talk about government, government legitimacy. Now, we've already agreed that a government that discriminates is illegitimate, and the first affirmative speaker, second affirmative speaker has said at the cross-examination that discrimination means acting negatively because they're different. This policy is acting different and acting negatively because they're different. Because cultures are different, this is not a justification for governments to discriminate some people and say, look, you're not allowed in our country, and say that other people are. We're talking about national uh, government legitimacy. A government that discriminates is not legitimate, and we have clearly shown you that this policy will make governments illegitimate because they discriminate. Furthermore, we've also shown you by, that if the government is illegitimate and discriminates, there's no stopping these employers, these schools, these hospitals, et cetera, et cetera, as stated by both David and Yena, that these other entities will learn from the government say, and say, look, if the government starts discriminating, who's to say that we can't? So in other words, it's going to provoke even more discrimination in the countries, and clearly this is something that neither side wants. Now, I'm going to next move on to the second clash point, which is social tensions. And I've already established this a little before, but the main thing I want to say again is that illegal immigration will create more hate, 
more social tensions, and we do not want this. And the more important part about this is the terrorist point about Al-Qaeda. Now, she comes up here and says that, look, Al-Qaeda will not hate us more because we implement this policy. That's not what we're saying. Look, the citizens of Afghanistan trust in the US government because we say that we accept you like we accept our citizens, that we accept you because we are not different. If we implement this policy, the government is explicitly stating that these people are different, and we don't want to associate with them. That's why we're denying them access. So it's, if, although it's not going to increase Al-Qaeda population, it's going to increase the people who trust in the Al-Qaeda. The Afghanistan citizens are not going to trust in the American government anymore. And clearly, this is not something we want because these Western, anti-Western Democratic parties are going to increase. The last clash point I want to talk about is the individuals and how they're going to be harmed. First of all, I've already shown you that citizens are going to be harmed in two ways. First, because there's going to be more discrimination, more social tensions, and two, because there's a more increased risk of anti-Western Democratic parties like the one that just hit Norway yesterday. We don't want people dying like the 80 people did yesterday because we started denying them access and discriminating them like this policy states. Uh, the second entity that we talk about in individual statuses is the legal migrants because there is no reason to discriminate them just because they're different. We've already shown you that discrimination is harmful to legal migrants, illegal migrants, citizens, the government legitimacy, all those entities. And clearly, if we promote more discrimination by a far right wing party or something that a far right wing party would support, the discrimination of migrants because of their cultures and how different they are in relative to us, that's going to create more discrimination, more social tensions, and something that the affirmative and the negative, and I hope all the audience agrees, is something that we don't want today. So because we show you that clearly the harms that are prevented by the negative clearly outweigh the benefits that supposedly exist in the affirmative world, we strongly urge to negate the resolution. All judges are going to leave the room to make the decision and we will be back in 15 minutes to announce.